is going on guys, this is Kfield here, bringing you a 2013 Belgian Grand Prix recap video. And I just got some gameplay here to go over the back of it. And I uh, got a lot of things to talk about. It was a boring race, but at the same time it had some interesting moments. And uh, Spa is one of my favorite races on the calendar. And it's definitely a fun one to watch, no matter how boring it can be. Um, just based on the fact that Vettel pretty much led the race from uh, first lap on the Kemmel straight, he took the lead, and that was it. That was all she wrote for the entire race. So, a little bit disappointed there, uh, but what can you do? So, anyway, the weather at Spa pretty much showed what it usually does. Um, it's definitely wet and wild here, and the way it usually works is that if it rains in qualifying, it's probably going to rain in the race too, but this here played out differently. Uh, it did not rain, it stayed dry all throughout the race, and uh, we only saw the rain in the later qualifying sessions. Now, fastest in Q1 was Fernando Alonso, showing good pace in the Ferrari car, uh, which is a little bit of a surprise, because uh, Ferrari hasn't been on their best or A game recently. Um, Q2 was Kimi Raikkonen uh, with the fastest lap there. And then Q3 in the pole was Hamilton, running two minutes, one second, and a tenth or a one hundredth of a second so 2.01012 was the exact time there so two minutes and one second basically um, anyway the interesting thing about Q3 was that Paul DeResta was gonna actually set the provi or he actually set the provisional pole lap and it's because he caught it at just the right time uh, as the drivers went out, they couldn't even get a flying lap down on slick tires because the track conditions just weren't good enough. There was not enough grip. So he put the intermediates on and he got out there just as the track was at its best for the Inters and uh, set a pretty fast lap and uh, was on the pole until uh, the Red Bulls showed up as the track conditions improved. Later on in the session, the Red Bulls showed up and took one and two. And then Hamilton came and took the pole by about one one hundredth of a second. I don't have the, ex oh, I told you the exact time, but I don't remember Vettel's exact time. I told you Hamilton's time was two minutes one, uh, zero point, zero one, zero twelve, uh, as far as the time. Now, the fastest laps of the race were set on the hard compound tire. And Vettel was the one that set that fastest lap with a 1 minute 57.66. That, that was at lap 40, so pretty much only four laps to go at that point. So the car had pretty much no fuel in it. And uh, it's pretty obvious why the fast lap would be set then. So, going on. Uh, we saw a lot of interesting pit stop uh, miscommunications. Especially with Jensen Button who ended up finishing 6 for McLaren and I believe he was had a car that was capable of running in the top 5, maybe even getting to the podium uh, if he didn't have uh, the miscommunication he was uh, Mark Whitmarsh where you know, they were trying to decide whether to go for a 1 or a 2 stop strategy and uh, eventually they settled on 2 but there was time lost in the process and it cost him some positions so not much you could do there Another person who decided to go for a one-stop strategy was Roman Grosjean. Uh, went for a one-stop, and he ended up finishing eighth. Uh, it didn't really work out to the best of his benefit. Uh, going into the race, we knew a two-stop strategy was going to be—it was going to prove to be the quickest uh, because the medium compound tires were getting around 20 laps, or 20 to 24 laps or so on the longest stints, and the hard compound, you know, would go the extra 20, 24 laps sure because it's only a 44 lap race so Perez did the longest stint on the hard tire actually speaking of Sergio Perez he was given a drive through penalty for running Grosjean wide off the track and uh, that was one of the reasons why Martin Whitmarsh decided to have Perez go with a one stop they were originally going to go for a two stop strategy but to try to make up some time from the penalty they decided to go with a one stop and that's what forced him to run that extra long stint and that's why he lost some time there and uh, ended up finishing in 11th place. He definitely had a points contending car. He could have been in the top 10 for sure, if not for that penalty. He had pace. Uh, it was just an unfortunate day for him. And uh, speaking of that penalty, and this is uh, an issue I kind of have with Stewart's here, 
Um, Jean-Eric Verne did the same exact thing to Nico Hulkenberg in the Sauber. Uh, he pushed him wide, and the stewards gave him no such penalty at all, not even a warning. Uh, so let me know your thoughts on that. Is that fair? Uh, I'm kind of of the belief that, you know, you can't do something for one person and not do it for the other. Uh, it's got to be fair across the board. If the rule states that you're not allowed to push somebody off the racetrack, then if anybody does it, they, they need to get a penalty. Period. Uh, and maybe the stewards just didn't see it, but the FIA, FIA is pretty stringent. They know, you know, they keep an eye on that kind of stuff. Um, so anyway, Paul DeResta's luck eventually ran out as he started from fifth. Uh, took taking the provisional pole in Q3 in the first time of his career, even though it didn't stick, and then ended up fifth on the grid and running in the top ten for most of the race. His luck ran out after an incident with Pastor Maldonado, of all people, going into the bus stop chicane. There was a multi-car incident with Pastor Maldonado, clipped Adrian Satil, lost his front wing, and then made the bright move of deciding to turn hard to go for the pits, the pit entry, which is very, a very sharp turn at spots, very tricky, probably the hardest pit entry lane on the whole calendar. And uh, Paul DeResta was right there. He's on the outside line, on, on the curb, nowhere else to go, holding his line, and he just drove right into the, his uh, rear left tire, spun him out, and uh, broke suspension. That was the end of his race, and it was a heartbreaker for him. Uh, the look on his face was absolutely heartbreaking, and I really felt for the guy. Uh, it was definitely, he's definitely been showing some pace the last, this season. Uh, the last few races, Paul the rest of Force India has been showing some strong pace. Uh, and they're making a name for themselves as one of the best midfield cars on the field right now. So, speaking of... Actually, you know what? Let's get into my driver of the race. I would have to say Fernando Alonso takes that uh, award for me. Uh, he started ninth with Felipe Massa starting 10th. The Ferraris just didn't have that good a pace in qualifying. And he fought hard all the way, ended up finishing 2nd. And that is a hard charge, uh, especially with, uh, you know, all the traffic in the back markers holding him up. Uh, he definitely, definitely did a great job, and that my driver of the race goes, goes to him for sure. Uh, what else do we have to talk about? Oh, Vettel, Vettel takes the lead over Hamilton on lap one going down Kemmel Straight. It was just from that point on, but I believe I said that already. Um... Oh, here's an interesting and something that actually really ripped my gut out. Kimi Raikkonen got a DNF, and that's pretty much eliminated all his hope uh, for a championship contending. Uh, or championship con contention ship. Uh, what happened was, going uh, from Blanchemont into the bus stop chicane, right about here on the screen, his brake failed. And the reason for his left front brake failing was because of visor tear-off. Uh, there's tear off pieces of like little thin plastic that you rip off as they get dirty so you can see. But when you ripped it off, it actually got sucked into the left front brake duct. And that caused the, you know, the, the lack of airflow caused the brake to overheat. And it failed and basically sent him right off into the grass, into the barrier. That was the end of his race. No points for him. And uh, that really hurt Lotus big time as far as the constructors go constructors race goes even though they're pretty far out of it but at least Grosjean brought home some points for Lotus as I said um, so yeah heartbreak for Kimi uh, hopefully we see where he ends up next season there is talks about where he's going uh, we all know about Red Bull but there's some also interesting rumor that has been heard that Kimi mentioned in private to a friend that he will be wearing red come 2014 and we all know what red means that means Ferrari now that wouldn't be the first time he's driven for Ferrari he has driven for them before uh, but to be honest I'm not sure if I uh, want to see him in Ferrari especially not with Fernando um, I don't think that would go over well I don't think they would mesh well together um, I'd rather see him in Red Bull with Vettel uh, I think he is a driver if he can be put in a Red Bull car, I think he definitely can t win a title. He can win a title in a Lotus car. They just need to be on their uh, on the game. They've had the pace, especially the new E21. You 
you know, they've had the pace. But I'd rather see him uh, go to Red Bull simply because him and Vettel are close friends. They have good chemistry, and that helps a lot when it comes to, you know, winning races and being, the, you know, being a good team in general. Uh, but that was pretty much it for Spa. Other than Mark Webber's failure to start, as usual, he blamed it on clutch problems at the start. So another bad start for Mark Webber. I think the guy is just not good at standing starts, and maybe he needs to go to IndyCar where they do rolling starts. But that is all for my 2013 uh, Belgian Grand Prix recap. Um, great job uh, to, you know, the podium finishers of uh, Alonso and Hamilton and Vettel, of course, with the number one spot. So the points as of now, Vettel 197, Alonso 151, Hamilton 139. It's going to be interesting to see what happens in Monza. We'll see what, if Mercedes has the pace to take a win. Constructors, 312 for Red Bull, 235 for Mercedes, and 218 for Ferrari. So that is it, guys. Leave a comment. I will see you later.